Okay, I think we can get started for today. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly go through the uh, the board we have here. So I think um, this PR was discussed the last time mm -hmm. we met, and um, as I understand, the phase was converted to a condition. And this looks good from API implementation point of view. Um, yes, yes. looks like uh, the, our first success. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. I'm saying yes, it, it looks like our first success to influence. Yes, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, <clears throat> so do you want to um, give a short overview of what it was doing and how we prevented just for the record? I think it is good to talk a little bit about it. Oh, uh, okay, so I just, I think after our discussion here that, uh, I mean, we, I noticed it at least in this forum. And uh, then we discuss uh, uh, several references. There, there have been at least, I think, two, reference, two references about this uh, topic, about using phases. This is number one in general on, on new CRDs. Uh, and uh, they, the suggestion was to not to use them. There is a discouragement to use them uh, for for some for the reason that I think we discussed them. And the second one was the the problematic nature of uh, um, of. Or maybe it's there. They are very similar. It's very yeah. hard to differentiate between them. So, in general, uh, when we use, uh, I would say in this case, if we need to use um, uh, phases, it means that we are doing some state machine calculation, and state machine calculation usually is bad in in the code because it co it may cause uh, forward compatibility and all kind of problems that uh, even backward compatibility uh, that we will not have expected. Uh, I, but I think that the, the, one of the things here is that this is representing other cases of validation that, that I'm not sure that, I mean, I think we have them as well. And, uh, uh, but anyway, that was the end. And we basically convinced that uh, it's better to use co the conditions directly and not to use the phases as an abstraction to the condition. Yep. The, so I think, uh, yes, I, I think you are right. And I think the references on provided during the review help a lot in, in making a convincing argument. And I think this is a good learning story. Um, I think we can continue to find such such issues and and bring in references and you know um, influence um, the API in in a better way so um, yeah um, awesome great work okay sorry you had no no it's I think we, we there is a follow-up on this on a, on a different uh, it's like a new a new agenda probably that needs to be added here. This this specific topic is is now discussed maybe in a different context. I don't know. It's it's like related and not related. Uh, I don't know if you saw the discussion about uh, moving validation to CLDs mm. uh, from from the controller to from the webhooks to the CLDs, and then. Uh, it, there started to be there a discussion also about for compatibility and uh, one of the example was about uh, things like it's not phase but it is like uh, for example when you have a, a list of options there so they uh, it was discussed as well like if you move it to the CRD as the validation of the CRD with uh, that you give like specific uh, options I think it was about the type of the CPU or something like that. And it causes uh, it, 
it may cause problem with forward and backward compatibility. Uh, it it reminds me it reminded me about this one as well, but yeah, that one is a more generic one. Yeah, I think we should spend some time uh to really brainstorm the the problems with that before things start to move in. Um, uh, it might be even good to you know um ask the PR author to come um have have a discussion here. I think it will be um worth it to to brainstorm all the cases of compatibility issues. Yeah. I think it's very strong related to what we do here for, I mean, uh, the topic, I guess the very high, high level topic is where validation should be done. And and is there a recommendation? What to, should we put them in the, which validation are fitting a CRD, which validation are, are fitting a web book, which, which validation are, are a fit for the controller and so on. I mean, all of this, things are uh, API, strongly API related, and we should create some- uh, Yes. Something written that recommends, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I just wanted to raise it because it's, it's, some, it's somehow related to this, but uh, it's a big topic. Yeah. I think that's that makes a lot of sense. Um okay, so for this one, do you think we should create an issue on Kubert Kubert uh just to track it better? Because I think what will likely happen is we we've agreed on the call that this needs more focus, but in you know, things will go off, maybe we won't find time and this will get lost somewhere. So I think yeah. it might be helpful to at least create an issue and maybe link it back to the project board or something. I think that will be, um, that will make it uh, top of our, our um, agenda every time. Yes, or there is a, I mean, I'm starting to dislike the, but I'm not sure if we can link it to the project. I'm starting to dislike the issues that are open because now uh, if you have an idea, you just open an issue and then hopefully someone will track it or manage it. The question is, can we link to that project that you open? Can we link also PR uh, that are and that are not issues? Is that also possible or, yeah. or is it limited to issues? No, we can do both issue as well as PR here. Okay, and the and the pro and that project is uh, specific to the organization or to a specific group? Uh, it is specific to the organization, so we can bring in all the issues in um Cubeboard and all okay. the PRs in Cubeboard here. Okay, so it's like my, uh, I was thinking that because this one specifically, the, the idea is not just to talk about it, is to have something written, right? Yeah. So maybe we, instead of opening uh, an issue, we'll, we'll force ourselves to do some something more aggressive, like uh, open a proposal and put there a summary and uh, maybe the goal. And then, then another goal, like the motivation, that's only the first part. It will be a work in progress and then we link it to the project. So what what is left here is to just fill it up with with the suggestion. It's very similar to the- Life cycle. Uh, fit the life cycle. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's like not just an issue that will not, never start. It's something that started. I, the, dis, the disadvantage, I guess, is that the one that opens it, they will have. They are like they will have to continue it, <laughs> but uh, the, but they, at I least mean, this forces us to do it. Yeah, that that is fine because I I think what we can do is label the proposal SIG API, and you know whoever has the time can can add comments to that uh, proposal later on. So yeah, uh, yeah. The the only problem is that. A lot of proposals stay in 
in not merged state. So um, we, we will have to, you know, be aggressive in order to get them merged here. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I, I think it is worth it to have some kind of proposal merge deadline in, in the release. Um, that that we are following like the release schedule um and you know if if there is a deadline like that we can you know push for it uh, more um, aggressively like that so yeah, yeah I, I i agree with your point i think we can you know create a proposal track it on that board um that is that sounds like a good idea i think the end result of that will be that we will have that that thing written um, so. Yeah, so uh, I think we can. Uh, by the way, it's. I mean, I learned this uh, some time ago. It's. It's also possible that people will contribute content not with comments, even with, like you could open a PR against someone else branch, and then you will just merge it, and that's it. It's like uh, it's possible as well. It's like it's it's merging into the. Into the. Like you can open a PR against the PR, so it you it would get in as well. So that's yeah. possible to do as well. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I think that we could add an action item for until next week to do it. Uh, if you want, I can try to open uh, something sure. like that. And yeah, and I, I think that will be helpful it. because I have not completely gone through that discussion. I know that discussion exists and. At a high level, I've skimmed through it, but I'm not able to, you know, follow up on on the details. So, that will be helpful uh, if you can start that. Um, one thing that I did get a chance to, um, to go through this time was um the existing proposal, the feature lifecycle, um, yeah. proposal, and I think we can. Um, there are some topics it might be good to discuss here. Okay. So one thing that I noticed is that, let me go to that particular. Okay, so the comment um, that I'm describing is here, I've um, noted, but let me you know give an overview what, from where I'm coming from. So, so the proposal says that we are going to have feature gates for alpha, right? That will be turned off by default. And then we will have the feature gate for beta, which will be turned on by default. So no, it's not, no. I think that was a suggestion, but I didn't, it's not, it's not. I don't think it's, it says that. Do you, can you, I think well, it was one of the comments and there was a, oh. I, I think I answered that it's not. Even beta is alpha, it's by default off. It's not by default off. It also co corresponds with the Kubernetes uh, behavior because in the past, Kubernetes did enable it by default on and then they realized it's a mistake, so they changed it. It also okay. does not make sense. In, I mean, in the sense of if you enable it by default on, then it's basically no longer uh, it's it's all, almost ga it's like it's very hard to remove now yes okay it's i'm uh, talking about total removal not uh, changing i mean if you if you have a beta and let's say that you put it uh, feature in the feature is enabled by default then what will happen is that the the user the your customer or whoever admins the, the cluster, if he says nothing, then this feature will be on and he may unintentionally depend on it. And then if it, it gets dropped in the next version, he may consider it as a breaking change. But in reality, it was just in, it was still in beta, which means it could have been dropped. So I think that's the main reason why well, it should still be by default uh, disabled. The only guarantee that you get if it's in beta it says that if you if it's in beta and it graduates to GA, then you are you are assured that you will have backward compatibility, which means that you worked with the beta one. Now it it got GA and maybe 
there were changes. These changes will still work with your beta version, with your beta client, for example, or your beta manifest. Okay. Yeah, so switching it makes a lot of sense and it removes the case that I am uh, discussing here. Uh, okay, so is it is it not clear? Or this is I'm not sure. Um... Uh, well, let me take a look. I think I might have got confused about the um, the comment um, where. Okay. Yes, because there was a comment like that. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not able to find it on the call, but I will take another look at it. Um, okay. if, if what you're saying is correct, as in, let's say in alpha, it will be off. In beta, it will be off again. And then in GA, we will turn it on and remove the feature gate. Then I think that solves a lot of problem problems. Um, so let's say in beta, if the user has turned the feature flag on, then in GA, they will continue to have, so when they upgrade, they will continue to have that default turned on uh, because we are you know, making that guarantee and their upgrade will work. If the user has turned it off, then in GA, we are going to enable it by default because we are GAing that feature. And then hopefully user will have a configuration flag that will help them to turn it off. Um, so yeah, the, the, the only question that does not get answered here is, let's say you, you are a user, you have a keyboard um, deployment, uh, it is using, so it has turned off a beta feature in production. And then when you go to GA, are there cases where you don't want that feature to be turned on by default? That's uh, that's the differentiation. Uh, that's like, uh, so I think there is a differentiation. I think there is a note here somewhere about, the, I think you also commented in the past that there is a, if a feature, having the feature gate and having a configuration uh, enable of the or disable of a feature is not the same. And if if there is a need to have a configuration, for example, for opt in or opt out for for a feature, in general, then then that needs to be introduced, and it's not related to the feature gate. The feature gate only protects the feature. No, uh, it just protects. Yeah. So that that makes sense. But one thing that that is happening here silently yes. is that yes. let's say a user has turned off the feature in beta, right? And no, it did. what do you mean it turned turned off? I mean the again the the default the is what the feature gate is off. Yeah, the feature gate the feature does not exist. I mean, he needs to explain in alpha and in beta. He needs explicitly to add the feature gate because he needs to acknowledge that he's trying out something now that may not reach GA and may drop. So it, it is taking a risk here. So he's, he's explicitly asking to use the feature, to have the feature using the feature protection, uh, feature get stuff. And and that's it. So he enables or disables uh, that, that part. If the feature itself has a configuration uh, on off thing, that's, in, that's another, that's another thing. It's not related to this one. So yeah. for example, I'm, I'm adding, I don't know, feature foo may have like uh, some fields in the feature and uh, and I'm introducing it now as beta, for example, directly. I don't know why, but let's say I'm introducing it directly as beta. Then I'm adding the configuration field and I'm adding the feature gate. If the, if the you by default, uh, it will not be in, I mean, the feature gate is, uh, it does not exist, it, it's off. So if someone wants really to use the new fields, they will first need to enable the feature gate. And then they will need to go to the configuration and that depends on how you want to control it. 
if you have there enabled uh, enable something and you want to say true false then you can you can add that and they will have to do it like uh, and you will yeah. you could say this is by default disabled yeah no I, I agree with that so so okay so the thought process i was having is that let's say if user has by not explicitly opted in to using that feature right and we are disabled that feature is disabled by default so okay. then the the user is not using that feature but internally the feature is still defaulting to some uh I'll, some uh default fields right so let's say for example okay. feature foo has um vmi dot spec dot foo which is string um field and yeah. since it is disabled in beta uh that field is empty right okay. uh, yeah. that's the um uh, you know omit empty coming into picture and it has defaulted to empty now from here they go to um, they upgrade the same cluster or same cube word installation to um, GA version of that feature. So foo is it now in GA. Now in GA, foo will be enabled by default because it has GA'd. Their value vmi.spec.foo, which was empty, will continue to be empty in, in the uh ga case as well unless yeah. and until some agent will come in and update it to the right defaults the the vmi spec will continue to have that empty um field so so what i was trying to get at is there is a corner case where that empty field is not a valid default for the ga uh, feature no, but then it means that uh, okay, I understand what you say, but that means that you break, you are breaking the API between beta and the GA, right? This is what you are saying. I'm saying I have an API in in beta that I'm assuming that either it is not used or it is used, right? Either way, and I'm GAing now. So in the, in GA, I'm I need to support backward compatibility. So it means that. Either it was used before or it was not used before. I need to keep compatibility. That's yeah. my that's my com that is the commitment of beta. That it does not break when it does not break compatibility when it goes to GA. Okay. So you're saying I think it, that one is this, that I think that one is the is explicitly mentioned. Like you cannot break the API you cannot break compatibility when you go from beta to GA. You can only the only thing that you could do is to say I'm, I'm. Uh, I mean, you can. For, I want to be clear. You could if you graduate the beta, then you must keep compatibility. If you drop the, if you drop it, if you drop the feature, you discontinue it, then you have no commitment. It's like you didn't graduate so you just removed it but okay is it is it that one needs to be clear yes yeah so so in other words what you're saying is if in beta the feature handled the case of foo dot spec dot sorry vmi dot spec dot foo as empty it needs to continue to handle that case in ga as well so yes. we will not be um broken so yes let me ask you this question. Um, since this is um, <clears throat> this document is the the record of of our discussion, do you think we should, you know, specifically exemplify this this use case? Because I think it is worth it for people who are you know adding API fields to stable um, CRDs. To, to know this use case that, okay, these are cases where API can break among upgrade and we need to explicitly handle that. So what I'm saying is, yes, you have mentioned that there is an API contract which needs to be honored from um, beta to GA. Can we use an example to say, okay, this is how it needs to handle it? Um, 
Okay, I understand what you are saying. Um, I guess you are. You are. It makes sense to do it. The pro. The I'm the only thing that I, I'm a bit uh, concerned of is that if we'll enter that area, then then it may explode in content because it's like uh, I'm not sure we can cover all options, but we could give some basic example. I'm. Yeah, it's like uh, just maybe like, we should uh, right yeah. the the string one. Uh, I I mean we can we can take inspiration from the um, API changes document. It has some basic examples which make it clear what they are trying to express. Um, so very basic like a string or an int example, um, and I think that will help. Um, you know paint a picture of how we are thinking of the API contract in during upgrades from beta to GA. Yes. I need, I need to look at this. I mean, what I'm, I understand what you are saying. My, my concern is that this will uh, make, I mean, it's like, it's like we are writing that the document itself is written in a, in a, in an attempt to be in, like not to get into too much details and not to express exactly how things are done, but to say the intention or what is the big, uh, big, uh, what is the the idea or the policy? I will say, but not to go into too much details. For example, I'm uh, we are not specifying here uh, wh how you are supposed to deprecate fields so or how you. I mean, what you what is the format of how to do that? We are. It's not written here. And I want. I didn't want to go into that, for example, because there may be debates on how to do that. And and uh, I prefer that, like the big picture. The I don't know the the. It will look on what is ne what is needed, and now how how to do it is to have another level of uh, another another. I don't know if it's another proposal or it's like an extension of how to implement this. Something like that. I don't know if it's clear what I'm trying to say because yeah. my my fear this is uh, this document will uh, it has a lot of uh, things logical things in it right and that some uh, uh, and if we'll get into conversation or debate on the specific uh, it will never get it so yes I want to what you're saying it makes sense maybe Maybe the I will try. I will try to look if I can put this in a maybe in an appendix in the end or something like that. So it will give not not ruin the the flow of reading, but it will do give some uh, example. So uh, yeah, if you can comment about, did you comment about this specific thing? So I can. So my comment about... was assuming that the feature gate is turned on by default in in beta, but I think the same concept applies the other way around as well. So I will update my comment to reflect that. And um, yeah, the appendix idea sounds good. Um, we might have to, you know, create another document to specify all the API related changes. So I, I'll leave it up to you where we want to, you know, create that document. Yeah. But I guess I understand what you are saying. Yeah. So maybe the, I think in the past we have discussed about creating a running document of the examples where APIs, um, API changes could have been handled better. Maybe all of that document could be in just one place and have different headers. Um, yeah, similar to the architecture API uh, document, yeah. right? Something like that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but I will I will say that we should we should uh, I mean, we better start collecting the the scenarios. Like for example, the one with the CRD. I think we spoke about others in the past as well, and then we will have the all of the samples or all of the topics like this all the kind of things that we see, then we can make out of it something more uh, organized. Mm -hmm. But we could, what, what I think it makes sense, for example, for now to collect, collect them somehow, I don't know, uh, Google document, uh, uh, 
I don't know how else we can we can do it. Yeah, just to collect think, the option. I think a Google document sounds good. So what I what we could do is we could have a Google document and put it in this section. And as in when we find a a case to be added there, we'll just click it here and during the call add it there. And we yeah. can async. I think that process might help. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Cool. Okay, so let me take the notes for it. Um, Okay. Here the, by the way, I'm looking at the text here on, on line uh, 168. It talks about the beta and it says the API is considered stable with care not to break backward compatibility with previous beta releases. This implies that fields may only be added during this stage, not removed or renamed. The future functionality is controlled using a so we need we need to uh, so that that was my my attempt. Maybe I should maybe it needs to be phrased differently so to make it more clear. Yeah. So this is awesome. So I can give you one example that I just saw. It's open right now, which I think uh puts this particular um statement to test. Um, so let me segue if if we can quickly do this. Okay. Sure. So this is a PR um, without a feature gate. So I'm assuming that this will get into effect directly, right? Um, so it's, it's a GA feature effectively for this um, conversation. And it adds certain fields to um, VMI status. Oh, actually, sorry. It adds fields to VMI spec. So virtual machine instance file system disk. <clears throat> and those fields, serial and bus type. Um, so there was a problem that was, um, you know, recommended in the review that this serial should be omit empty and this bus type should be bus type um, to follow the convention. But what ended up happening is this PR got merged. It got, I think, shipped into 1.3. And then these um, things were handled in a follow-up PR. So we have a different PR. This is the follow-up where the field name is changing and this field is um, going from, uh, it's making the requirement less strict, right? So we are going from, it cannot be empty to it could be empty um, scenario. So I'm, so there are two problems here. Well, potentially there are two problems. One is that we are going from, we are, Re reducing the strictness of valid um, requirement for the field. I'm not 100% sure if this is a problem or not, but we can think about it. The second is that we are changing the field type um, from one release to a different release. Um, yeah. Is it, but is it, uh, it was between releases or was it in like a fix in, inside? I mean, it was not released yet. You were saying it was released already? I think because this was merged, so we have got a 1.3 branch mm. out, right? 1.2, you mean? No, 1.3. Oh, uh, wait. No, we have one. I think we, the current branch is 1.2. 1.3, whatever you are putting now on, on main is for 1.3, the future 1.3. I see. Okay. Yeah, then I have the numbers backwards. Okay, then we have... Uh, 1.2 release candidate, yes. 
we have the release candidate and uh, in this release That's the tag it's not the brand you have only v1.2 zero i think that's the branch and then you tag it with rc0 and all of this stuff yep but uh, yeah. but um, so, so i think this pr is in here and actually this is perfect timing right because now we need to make this a release broker in order to you know exercise that statement that we should not um, you know, change the fields um, during GA, I think this becomes a very solid candidate for release blocker. Um, okay, so this so you are saying that they change it between 1.1, for example, and 1.2, right? So in 1.1, this was different. No, I think, no, that's not what I'm saying. So let me rephrase. So this particular field was introduced in 1.2 with okay. black fields and it got merged. So this is in the um, release candidate uh, tag. Ah, okay. Okay. And now they fixed it, but they did not backport it? Uh, they, the fix is open right now. Oh, it is and open. It's like not melt. Correct. It's not much. Okay. So what I'm proposing is that we should make this PR a release blocker. Un set that in other words, unless and until this PR does not get merged from SIG API point of view, we are not ready for the release. Okay. So let, let me, it's like, okay, I understand what you're saying. So uh, if they want to really fix it, they must backport it now. And if it's not merged, the backport is not merged we should block the release of 1.2. Right, because yeah. what will happen is if we don't block the release, we will we will ship the release with a, uh, with a field bus hyphen type, and then we will have to carry that field forever because we can't break compatibility on that, on a released GA version. Yeah, so, so my question is, uh, is the feature that they are touching, is it, uh, is it protected or is it not protected? No, it's not protected. Okay, so if it's not protected, then yes, it's like uh, they cannot either they cannot change it anymore, or they need to, or they need to block the release and fix it now, or make sure the the backport succeed. Yes, correct. But so what I'm seeing now, what you are going over now, is the the original introduction of the field, right? Not the fix. Because I see it's merged. Yes, this is original. Uh, yeah. What I was trying to confirm is, does it have a feature gate or not? But I don't think it has a feature gate. It is directly affecting the API and users using it. See? Okay, so we should, uh, yes. We should mark, can you can you comment on the, on the new... Maybe we should just we should just comment now, and we should probably add it to the agenda for uh, the meeting tomorrow. Okay. Uh, because it looks like uh, yes, looks like a blocker. I right, see. This is this is on its way to get merged, right? Like uh, it yes. was already approved LGTM. Uh, yeah, it has approved. Well, let's see. Yeah, you see, the, I think the label you see on the on the right, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why is it merging? No, what? Oh, it why was just it, here, 10 minutes. Okay, all right. Okay, Lubo got us, Lubo got to it better, faster than, than we, us. So, okay, he beat it, beat it. To us. The, only, the only problem, this is not enough. They must backport, they must do a backport. I don't, I don't see, I don't know if they, I Maybe see. we should just warn it, and, and we should. I mean, we have a. I think there are two issues here. One is that we should warn that they must uh, do. This is like blocking the one point two release, just to make sure that they are blocking it, because otherwise there will be a problem. And is there a way to mark it uh, to mark the PR in a way? Maybe a label that 
that uh, that's like it it notifies the the one the, the one that needs to release that it's not finished yet like we must wait for it that's the question okay yeah yeah so i think i will add two comments um Is that what you were trying to explore? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, that, that's the two things, yes. Okay, awesome. Yeah, let's end here. It has the API label, right? I mean, it does. That API chain, yeah. But it does not have uh, needs backport label and uh release yes. i don't know if we have a we have a label for which backward i know that uh, what usually is done is you do a cherry pick and then you mention the i don't know if they did it here and it's like you you do a, a command that the bot will will just do the automated cherry, cherry pick later yeah. yes i think that happens after the the merge so uh, we we will wait for for it to merge and then. Um, no, it it is happening after the merge. But you but if they intend the intention was to to backport, they should have already done it. I mean, oh. you could do it whenever you want. The bot will just after it gets merged, the bot will automatically cherry uh, cherry pick it. But uh, I I get based on the answer, then I guess to your commander, then I guess they should do the cherry pick or not. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to take notes. Yeah, I didn't have it on the agenda. I will go to, I can just copy the comment. Um, what was um, yeah okay yeah i i think this was a really good example um of things uh, that you know we could prevent so yeah okay um so let's see, I think we jumbled around the agenda a little bit. Okay, some other updates. So there is a good discussion going on in this um, shadow node uh, proposal about upgrade issues. I'm just calling it out, um, spent some time to you know discuss the potential upgrade issues and it's being answered in this uh, proposal. So I'm not sure about- Is it, it a proposal or uh, a proposal at the moment? Yeah, it, well, it is a proposal in, and it has uh, an open PR. Okay. Yeah, I think the, they started it and now it moved hands and someone else is continuing. Ram, Ram is the guy that continued it, I think. Yes. Uh, yes, I see there is a, uh, 
there is uh, there is talks there. So basically, well, I don't know. I, yeah, sorry. Basically, the upgrade issue was potentially around the ordering of uh the the new CRD uh word controllers, word handlers, and word API because this change introduces a new CRD and then all the different components read or write to that particular um, CRD. So because the upgrade happens in, in an order um, where different components could have different versions, you can imagine that while word handler is being upgraded, word controller is on an older version so in our case they are on um you know alpha or or pre alpha version and then this this feature is introduced and then it has to talk to uh, newer api so word handler has to handle that case of newer word controller word controller has to handle the case of older uh, word handler and things like that so those are the things that are being discussed here um if you are interested, then you know you okay. can. They spare. They are. I don't. I don't think the the order. I I don't remember if they. There is some order that is controlled, but most of the things are not controlled. I think they are controlling the. Um, the CRD that they are first, and then they are uh, upgrading the components. I don't know if they are differentiated with the build controller and the rest. Like the virt handlers and the virt API, I don't know if there is an order there. Yeah, and then the, there is an order. So the order is described here. Uh, CRD is R back word handler, then controller, and then finally API. Which API? Uh, word oh, API. API. But what is the what? Ah, uh, Vitan. No, Vitan is before the controller. That doesn't make sense. Yes, word handler is before the controller. How can it be? Okay. I don't know. It, it, he has a, like there is a reference. Uh, that yeah, reference and, actually shows it. Yeah, and and actually I have seen this in production as well. This is how it works. So we first, you know. May generate the new manifest, apply it. Then we generate the new RBAC, apply it. And then this create or update services, right? That one updates the... Um, that one updates... Well, no, this is services. Okay. Wait, where is? Well, I I try to tell them that we should not use a new CRD, but it's like uh, I'm always uh, losing this fight about CRDs or not CRDs. But let's see how it uh, goes. I need to talk with this guy. Maybe. No, maybe so I think, I think uh, there was a very very strong argument made here uh, that we need to use this CRD. And I actually found out that uh, Kubernetes API server also has some internal CRDs that they use for functioning of API server. So my recommendation was that if we want to indeed use a CRD, we can name it like how Kubernetes API server does. So they do it internal dot API server dot gates dot io or something like that, which makes it very clear that this is an internal implementation and admin is not supposed to. No, the problem is not. No, I don't have. It's uh, you're talking about now to make clear that it is internal. So the problem that I'm usually seeing is that the having a creating a CRD sounds easy and simple, but in reality, it's a total mess because then you need to. To manage the CRD, uh, have uh, have a life cycle for the CRD. Uh, you need to change fields there, do stuff like that, and you all, always need maybe to track the 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 shadow that it tracks, like the node in this case. So all of this guy, all of this stuff, 
requires you to think about it and do that. If there was, I'm not saying there is another option, but if there was a, a better way to do it, even if it's more complicated to implement, but it's just fewer CRDs, then then I will have preferred that. Like if I can use an annotation or I can use a, a something else to to do the same, and use a, use some policies like the Alba policies or, or or wait for another feature to come in or things like that. I would have preferred that, but uh, I I know that it's not always possible. And there maybe because it was discussed here, maybe that was attempted and we are good. In many cases, I'm seeing CRDs are proposed first. Which is, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Good. Yeah, I think uh, we we went down the discussion of how what are the other ways we could do this, and this came out to be the simplest. So. Um, I think most of the people here concluded that this is the way we want to go. And now, now the discussion is that, okay, in this way, what are the upgrade issues we should uh, handle? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. For example, this is, this upgrade thing is another example of how thing, a simple thing gets complicated because of this, this yeah. stuff, but yeah. Yeah, so just wanted to share that um, if okay. um, if you are interested, we have a discussion going on there. And then, yeah, I don't have any more updates from this board. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, and pull requests, okay. Yeah, so this particular PR is the one that is the shadow node um, proposal. So we're going to skip that. This has gone to stale. Okay, okay, so this one is approved. And it's an API chain, so we might want to take a look at this. It's old, right? When was it uh, last discussed? Recently discussed it. Yeah, then recently added the approve button. Who? They co added the approve. Yeah. yeah. I believe okay. Roman is on it, so there might not be big. So who is, who is putting the hole? I don't understand. Oh, the hole? Uh, the same. Oh, okay, approve then hold. Yeah, that one looks like dangerous that it will get no, but it is main. You could we could still fix it if it's for the one point three. Yeah, this is one point three. Yep. So here we still have a chance to influence even if it gets in. Yeah. True. But yes, it should be probably Investigated as well. Yeah, I I think these look great. I don't think we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
this might be related to validation. Yeah, by the way, we are not, I think the, API, I don't remember if we talked about it, but the API part, uh, is it is it tracked because uh, the label was added because we, we touched the webhook? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so there are certain, certain document, uh, well, certain directories that this label works on. Yeah. Or API default. I think the defaults triggered it. We are changing the defaults here. Okay, I think we might have to take a look at this one. Go to edit. But it's still not merge anyway, so. I think we should add a label right here. Do not merge. Yes, the, he he say he wrote DNM, which is do not merge. But oh, <laughs> okay. You could you could say you could put a hold. Uh, yeah, I just I, to make sure uh, it is not merge. No, I think we could. I think this is enough. I I thought this is name of a new CR or something that is going. <laughs> I did being added. So there is DNM, there is whip, and there is all kind of things that make it. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, I think we are doing nice. And... This one is already on our board. You see the the PR here with the VMI CRD. That's the new topic that we move validations from webhooks to the CRD. Yes. To, to the CRD, and that's like a uh, Roman gave their feedback. Generally, it looks like it needs to be each one needs to be discussed. Like. Uh, yeah. So do you want to said. track this PR on our board, or do you want to just track the proposal? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you open a proposal. Uh, I think Roman asked to open a proposal, which makes sense. Um, to discuss the whole thing. So I'm not sure what what happened. Okay. Uh, and what he's going to do? I need. We need to check what he's going to do. If he is opening a proposal or not. I also. I usually. I think all the API changes should have proposal. Never. It doesn't matter. Because then it would sh it shows that uh, this, the backward compatibility, all of the stuff were discussed. Correct. Um, yeah. But the po topic itself is uh, is a big one. It like uh, requires uh, at least a day or more to to think all of the scenarios and things like that. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I think um, we are coming up on time and I think we have we done yeah. a good job uh, browsing through. So out of the four or five left, I think this we already talked about, this we talked about. Um, this one, it's on the one of the other um, PRs, um, TPM persistence um, feature. So we talked about that. This one is already addressed. So I think um, we did really well in, in going through that list um so yeah we'll yeah. keep working on that more
Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank and you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.